Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about counting Bitcoin. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale we are having on the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Now you should know that since I have my dubious speculation t-shirt on, there will be some dubious speculation going on in this video. But then of course, why should this video be any different than any other video that we do on this channel? Now, one of the things I was thinking about was this idea of, of counting monthly returns. And if you think back to like counting cards or something in blackjack and assigning a certain value to a certain type of card to give you an edge on, on, on the actual game to figure out, you know, are you likely to hit blackjack or not? You know, is there something we can do with Bitcoin monthly returns? Now, arguably, Bitcoin monthly returns are extremely arbitrary, right? Like Bitcoin, why should Bitcoin care? The, the day a candle opens or the day a candle closes. It, it certainly really doesn't matter. It's arbitrary things made up by, by us. Um, with that said, we, we've noticed certain trends in the past and they haven't always played out. Like one of them was in August of 2021. We said, look, September tends to be a red month. And it was. Of course, there, it does exist a universe within our multiverse where perhaps it was a green month. There's always a probability associated with it. And in the same way, there was a trend back then in August and going into September, we, you know, at least in the premium list, we were talking about, look, every time we've had a red January, it's been followed by double digit gain February. So uh, you can see that over here, right? I mean, every, every January that Bitcoin has had that was red was followed by double digit gains in February. What's more interesting is what happens in March, right? Do you get a typical sell-off in March or do you get something like 2019 where it actually stays slightly positive and then continues to rally for a few months? It's, and 2021 was also a green month for, for March as well. So I started thinking, okay, well, you know, the seasonality of it is, is somewhat subjective. And of course, monthly returns are subjective. But is there a way we can count these things to try to provide an idea of, you know, are we more likely to see a, a surge or a drop or anything like that? Or does it trend up with time? Does it not? Obviously, we know with prices, they tend to take the escalator up and the elevator down, meaning we sort of slowly go up. But then when things drop, it's like the rug is pulled and we, we come down relatively quickly. So we would expect there to be more green months than red months anyways because of that idea. But also just because the idea that Bitcoin generally trends up with time, we would expect more green months than red months. So I had this idea, like what if we count them? So we're going to do it two different ways. The first way is if we have a green month, we're going to say that's a plus one. If it's a red month, it's minus one. And, and we're gonna sum this up as a function of time and see what we get, okay? So you would expect, I would expect it to, gen to generally increase, okay? That was my assumption going in. And it sort of does, right? it does generally increase. You can see when we first launched, we came up, we came back down during that, the, that sell off after that first sort of mini bull market. Well, it wasn't really mini, it gave incredible returns, but it didn't, very, it didn't last very long. Um, and, and we've more or less been in an uptrend on the count, meaning you get a plus one or a minus one, depending on if it's a green month or a red month. And one of the interesting things to note is we sort of saw some resistance at various levels in the past. Like we saw resistance here at around yeah, maybe like 18, a count of 18. And then we sort of broke through and then went up here in 2017, 2016, 2017. But what's interesting is, is during this most recent you know, rally we had back in late 2020 and early 2021, the count hasn't really changed a whole lot. You know, I mean, it's sort of in the same range that it has been in. Right now, the count's 25 measured this way. Uh, the count was also 25, you know, half a year ago. And it was 25 or more than half a year ago. This was back in 2020. You're talking about almost a year and a half ago or so. And then also in 2019, the count was at 25. The count was also 25 back in 2017. The count hasn't really changed a whole lot in a long time. One of the things to consider is we found double resistance here at 18 before breaking through, and now we're getting some resistance here at around 28, you know, a, a count of approximately 10 higher. So perhaps we'll eventually break through when looking at it this way. But then I thought, okay, well, there's gotta be another way we can look at this because, you know, why should a 1% month be weighted the same as a 10% month. So then what, what I decided to do, and this was the only anal this, this was the only additional step I took. And if you guys like this analysis, let me know and maybe I'll explore it even further. But the next step that I took was, well, what if we assign a plus one if the if the monthly return is between say zero to 10% 
and a plus 2 if it's above 10%. And then the, the converse of that is also true. So between 0 to minus 10, minus 1, worse than minus 10, we, get, we add a minus 2 to the count. When you do that, you actually do get something that looks a little bit more like what you would expect, right? A, a general increasing function, uh, not monotonically, of course. You do see periods where it goes down, but it more or less increases. And I, I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, but also it shows that the count, you know, I mean, during this first move over here, you can see the count topped it, you know, it more or less stayed around 10. During this one, it sort of hit around 30. This one made it all the way up to around 50. So far, this one has been around 60. Okay, so from around 10 to 30 to 50, this one's currently at around 60. Obviously, you know, I mean, could we go to 70? We could. We could also come back down. It's hard to know. I mean, remember, if February gives double-digit gains like it's looking like right now, then we'll just come right back up uh, at the end of this month because this only includes up through January of 2022, and it does not include the current month, which is currently up more than 10%. Um, and I don't really know the best way to analyze this, whether you should, you know, whether you should draw a trend line from, say, this bottom here to this one. If you did that, though, it wouldn't have really given a great entry point on this, this bear market over here because we would not have reached that count on this trend line before, you know, before taking off again. I'm not really sure if you should, you know, connect it in a different way where you sort of connect, you know, this, this bottom over here um, with, say, maybe the 2018 bottom and say, okay, anytime we're above it, it's more or less just like the business as usual. Bitcoin is in a in a you know bull market. Everything's going crazy. Uh, when we're below it, you could argue, okay, we're seeing some undervaluation on some on some metrics. Um, doesn't mean you can't go lower, but this is certainly one interesting way to look at it. And you could also maybe draw a a trend or a, a channel and say, anytime we're in this channel, you you would argue that a lot of long term hodlers are accumulating, and we've seen that with a lot of on chain data. There are long-term people accumulating right now, right? And they weren't really accumulating back in April. But remember, you know, I think a lot of people assume that if long-term holders are accumulating, the price has to go up immediately. But no, basically the long-term holders don't care about what happens immediately. They just accumulate when they think the price is undervalued. And if they think it's undervalued, then they just accumulate. And they're just patient and they wait until it's eventually it, it is at a higher price and then they'll take profits. And we've seen this thing play out over and over and over again. So whatever, you know, whatever theory you subscribe to, it doesn't really matter, right? None, none of us really know what's going to happen in the short term. One of the things we can say is that Bitcoin does generally trend up with time. You can see that just by, you know, logger in the progression trend lines. You can see that by running a return on investment. You can see that by the count on Bitcoin and seeing that we get a lot of green months, even though there are red months sprinkled in between. And, and so hopefully this does provide a unique perspective on the market that perhaps you have not seen before. And if it does, then let me know down below and in the comments. And if you do like it, I can explore it even further. If you don't think it's that important, if there's not enough interest, then I'll just drop it where it is. I, I do agree it's dubious speculation. Try not to take this to the bank because I guarantee you they're not going to cash it in. Um, but it does provide somewhat of a, of a unique perspective, I think, on the market to say, you know what, while the monthly returns of Bitcoin are are somewhat arbitrary is there any way that we can we can count them and provide an understanding of where we are in the count and again if you wait it this way you can see the general macro uptrend that we're in if you wait it where you don't or you have no waiting you can you can see that we've more or less been around 25 around a 20 a count of 25 for you know four years or so and really haven't broken out to a higher count uh, when not waiting any of these months differently than any other month based on, say, the absolute value or the magnitude, I should say, of of that gain or that loss. Um, so we will see. We will follow this up. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. We also do a premium list sale going on. Make sure you check it out into the cryptoverse.com. You can keep it as long as you as long as you do not cancel and you can lock in the lower rate. We have weekly videos, three of them, uh, weekly reports. Telegram alerts channel, Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, the end of the Cryptoverse website, the end of the Cryptoverse app, a whole lot more strategy dashboard, et cetera, et cetera. Check it out into the Cryptoverse.com. You can always cancel if it's not your thing. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.